Okay, cool. What's so frustrating and so great about YouTube, I talk about it as the wild west of the internet because it, it truly is. It's this kind of like gold rush. It's this element of like, you have so much power in a day, you can upload a thing in the morning and then a million people could have seen it, you know, in, 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 by, by the evening. It's, that's a powerful tool. Um, but what's interesting about it is because it's so broad and there's so many different angle and endpoints for, for content, you have competition in a way you never thought you'd be competing with, you know, you, like we're, we're, we're trying to make people laugh, but then you have people that are like uploading about what their favorite Cheerios is and they're getting more views, you know. And it's weird to kind of like <laughs> compare that where you spend two months of post work and graphics and, you know, it's, it, there's, it, it doesn't translate as cleanly as you'd imagine just to the view count standpoint, um, but ultimately a lot of that has to do with this kind of like crazy spooky term which is the algorithm, which is the YouTube algorithm. Did my girlfriend cheat on me? No. Does she know that I cheated on her? She does. Am I going to hell for that? Yeah. What? <laughs> I'm going to hell? Yeah. For cheating on my girlfriend. Among other things. What other things? Like jaywalking. Uh, <laughs> you had impure thoughts. You cussed a few times. Uh, when you're in hell, is there a way to get out of hell? No. 15 seconds. <sighs> Are there other dimensions? Mm -hmm. Did I live a good life? Uh, it was okay, middle of the road. Like a four out of 10. What's the smartest question I can ask in this situation? It's that one. God! Uh, yeah. Did I have a soulmate? Yeah, her name's Heather. She's from Denver. You guys never met. Did we ever come close to meeting? If you're in like a Black Angus steakhouse, you had back-to-back -back booths and just neither of you turned around. Who are you? I'm Santa Claus. Really? No, not really. So you lied? No, yeah, I was making like a joke. I'm allowed to make jokes from time to time. Have you lied about any of the other stuff? No. Am I actually dead? Okay, no. <laughs> then where am I? <laughs> That's right, you're on an episode of Purgatory, the show where you live your life to your fake afterlife confession. So this we posted at like 9 a.m. on a Thursday, and then by noon it had gotten a million views. It was, it was this crazy, crazy kind of like astronomical sky shot of just like posted a link, put a video up, and so I say this though because uh, we set a bar that we have never met again. This is what I always would think I was gonna strive for was this idea of like, you know, gonna build a lot of subscribers, a lot of followers, and then eventually we're gonna get that viral video. Well, this one happened right out the bat first. And I can tell you a, a few reasons why I think it happened um, that we've like implemented into some of our other stuff that's like helped for the future of other videos. But what was interesting was that, yeah, this went, this went up really quick and then suddenly we were responding to a lot of people. We were kind of like getting a sense from the world of like, what do you guys got next? And there was a lot of these questions of like, so what's the next thing? And we had nothing shot. We had no plans of making other stuff. It was simply just like, does the world think this is funny? And if so, maybe we, it'll get us a couple meetings around town because our long-term goals are like writing and development for like more mainstream you know, media. So that was, and it seems like that's how YouTube has been used for a lot of people is this, Kind of like, I don't know, it's this like training ground where you're really kind of practicing stuff and seeing, seeing what people, what sticks with people or whatnot. But then when this stuck and we had a lot more ideas and, and more scripts, we decided to get serious about it, as serious as we can be, and kind of, yeah, right, and, and then build out a, a, a channel. And so, so for the last couple years, we've been releasing a new sketch, a la that, every, uh, every month. An MCN, multi-channel network, they're big incentive is to get channels that they like, are excited about, and get them all under their umbrella, and they offer you advice and helps with like hashtags and algorithms and all the stuff that they think can help get more views. In exchange, you offer them a percentage of your uh, ad share. So when you're gonna be turning on ads in front of your, your videos for like Google AdSense, <coughs> they get a percentage of that. Uh, and so we were going back and forth on like, you know, there's incentives to do that because that's someone that's going to kind of take you under their wing and, and carry you through and give you advice along the way, which made sense to, for us because we're not, we weren't the YouTube, like we didn't necessarily want to play that game and I can explain what playing that game is. Um, so we decided to go, go, go through with this and it worked out really well for us and we're kind of eclipsing now this, this two year mark but basically what their big thing from the very beginning to us was, was that if you guys are serious about this and you wanna build a channel and you wanna get people on board with what you're doing, you wanna get more subscribers, you wanna, you wanna generate an audience that's gonna follow you wherever you take them, to TV, to movies, to podcasts, uh, their big thing is 
as upload as often as you possibly can. That we've been so bad at. We don't want to leave a doubt in anybody's mind that we can handle large budget material, that we, can, we want to play with special effects, we want to be, you know, so that basically signed us up for taking a lot of time on our stuff to like give a big seminal moment every month, which is one game. But that means that like, you know, our eyes on a prize that's beyond just making money doing Google ads. It's, it's beyond, it's like wanting to prove ourselves. It's our proving ground. Um, versus what the real YouTube game is and the people that are making careers out of YouTube and able to make pull in the money that you know, one would want to be able to quit day jobs and, what, and whatnot are the people that can have a, a type of content that can go up at least every third day. And oftentimes, we were told when we were meeting initially with these people was that if you can release something of like merit if you were, if like for us, our big thing, and we still try to, we're trying to do this, is that if we're going to do a sketch a month, our big sketch for the month, the idea is that we were already pre-planning what bonus and ancillary content we could be shooting or editing around that event so that we were releasing something a week. So at least now on our channel, we always have a thing coming out every week. At the beginning of the month, it's the sketch. The next one's the deleted scenes. Then we have, uh, uh, um, you know, we have like behind the scenes uh, uh, reels and then possibly a teaser for upcoming material. Um, and then that was like the best we could do because our bandwidth, our bottleneck was me. Uh, you know, we were, we were shooting all the stuff. We'd accordion out for crews and I can get into that if people are curious about like our production style. But then when it came down to like actually uploading and, and the bandwidth necessary to like put all the money on the screen, you, you're going to end up doing, as you guys know, a lot of your own work and that requires hours and it requires having a day job and then editing at night and you know, saying uh, uh, you're not going to be going out on the weekends and explaining to mom every year why the Christmas gift isn't there. If you read comments on our, our videos, a lot of, we have a lot of, we're lucky because we have a lot of positivity. The, the number one comment from everybody is, why don't you guys have more subscribers? We have, we have videos that are in the millions of views. We put out stuff as often as we can. But even the, even the people that watch our stuff are, are flabbergasted. Why, why don't you guys have, have more? And that's really encouraging and nice to hear, but it's also like, I don't know. Uh, um, but the, 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 best, the best bet is that it's that it is the element of the algorithm. The algorithm really plays toward those that are able to upload regularly. And the type of content that you can upload regularly is the stuff that is like production minimal, or you have, a, you have, you have an infrastructure in place that you can have a team that, that everyone is very specialized and you can be super, super efficient. Um, but I don't know who has like, you know, the production team behind South Park where they can turn around an episode in six days or whatever. <laughs> but, uh, um, but for us, you know, our bandwidth is really that like once a month kind of, kind of zone. But if you are in the realm of, of, of vlogging and if you are in the realm of, you know, maybe like tutorials or informational type of videos, it's a really sweet spot for having the ability to make YouTube your career. I had done Blue Man Group for like four or five years and then I was at this crossroads of like, do I want to come back and get back into filmmaking, which is a big passion of mine, or do I want to like paint myself blue and be one of those guys for, for, for the rest of my life? Which, you know, interesting crossroads. We've gotten to where we wanted to be when we started it, and now we're starting to consider and how we're going to pivot it and how we're going to kind of like upgrade it and start to make it work for us in, in new ways. Because again, it's not the way that's like, it's not paying our, our bills fully. It's a way we can take what we're making, which is not a lot, from the videos and fueling them into the next one. And that's a way we can kind of like keep the machine alive. But the bigger stuff is coming now. Like we're, uh, uh, we got an offer to be on a, uh, for a staff, staff writing position on a show. Uh, you know, and now we're developing some like TV stuff. So definitely stuff has come from the channel and wouldn't, these opportunities wouldn't be there if it weren't for what the channel's done for us. But there are other ways to monetize and way, things that we've said no to, which is you know people will start to reach out for like branding opportunities. Um, just when one video went and, and did well, it was uh, you know we were starting to get we got like a bunch of messages from like a watch company and like a sweatshirt company, and they wanted us to like have these organic kind of you know uh, mentions of these of these products in, in the in the sketches and. You know, that was again where it's like, what is the goal and what can we get away with and what, what do we not want to do? And I'm not sure how familiar you guys are with ads, but for, uh, for just for a scope of things, uh, you know, if we had ads on from the start with White Room and when it made it up to a million views, if we did the like preview, you can skip through five second ad, we would have made probably like $1,200 for a million views. So it's not necessarily what you would, but, but when you're a vlogger or when you're in a situation where you have 
500,000 subscribers and you're uploading a video every third day and every video is getting two million views, that is money that actually adds up in a very real way. So you can kind of like target that. But you know, you have to find the balance of like what types of ads you want to target on your, on your videos versus uh, retention rate. And this is going to sound so specific and odd, but it, it's what they told us helps. We have a title of our video, then we have a big line. So there's this key that's like shift forward slash, but it's just this line. And then on the other side of that, we have Chris and Jack. So that within the title of, so if you search anything, if that is the only thing people see, they get the title of the video and they know whose it is. So that's associated from the very beginning. Um, and then within the description of the video, uh, you'll, you know, you'll be able to kind of put in all of your descriptions and titles and, and crew and cast and stuff. And that can go as long as you want. But you really want to maximize the top three lines because that's what shows, that's all that shows before someone has to open it up and then the rest comes out. So we were told in the f only do one line of the description of the video and that shows up in searches too. So what you're putting in that first line of the description of your video is important. Then you usually on the second line want to link to uh, um, the subscribe, just your main page, just a hyperlink. And then the third line you want to just say when you're going to upload your next video. So everybody gets a lot of information from when they just like click a link and then they have everything that you can see in that window. You want to play with like 10 hashtags that are like broad ones, like funny video, funny video, <laughs> funny video 2018. Like these are all crazy. You just like repeat like what is your, just like different ways of that. And then you get into the nuanced stuff. So you're still in the, you're playing with the big, People that are just like, I just want to laugh. So I typed in laugh, and that's a hashtag on our videos is laugh. And then you can get from that pool. And then you have the David Blaine's, the purgatory, the whatnot. And some people will find who the biggest YouTubers are, like PewDiePie and some of these crazy names. And then you'll put their names in the hashtags. So when someone searches that name, your video might pop up in the, in the mix of that. So there's little tricky ways you can do things like that. And you know, depending on how shady you guys are, you can <laughs> take that if you want. But, uh, but for us, we, you know, we also wanted to just like have some semblance of integrity, which is probably why some of our videos haven't done as well. Within my page, I have the opportunity to click when I upload a video and I choose monetization. There's like five different options for me of what types of monetization I can choose. And so I'll choose usually the five second pre-roll skippable because that's like gets you the most bang for your buck but only asks five seconds of someone's time. There's the full 30 second to a minute pre-roll that's unskippable and that might as well be no one will watch your video. Uh, <laughs> and then there's, the, there's like a lower third. So like there's a thing you can see they'll pop up and you have to click out of. That's just a notch below that. And then there's like a, uh, then there's just the sidebar ones that I think are default. You can't turn those off. That's when you can start to put those mid-roll ads because then it's like, oh, if you can squeeze another ad in there because you got good retention rate, then it'll double the, the revenue. So it's still an ad that someone has to see, but by placing it later because you have a high retention rate, those mid-ads are, are more valuable. But retention rate, funny enough, is a big deal for uh, those that are uh, looking into the analysis of your of your channel, if you are wanting to be like, if you're wanting to say like, hey, got a lot of subscribers, you should look at us for this TV show. We got a great idea. These people are going to come along for the ride. People are now asking, you know, in producerial positions, like, what's the retention rate on your channel? And that's basically saying that like, sure, you've got two million views, but how many people stuck around more than six seconds, you know, into the video? MCNs can do that. These multi-channel networks, if you want to get involved with that, they have. Oftentimes, these resources that can help with like supplementing a budget, uh, you know, that you can find ways to to, to get into like a, a um, production fund. Also, when it comes to gear, they have a gear locker, and then you can, also through them they have in in house uh, um, um, production crew and, and whatnot that can help out along the way. Oh my God! Now, watch out, they're all three mildly different ways. Okay. Jeez. These are not, let me, let me warm up real quick. Hang on one second. Great. Yeah. Just to prove it exists. Okay, cool. Right? There we go. Oh, man. It's this thing. Can I, can I adjust real, real quick? Yeah. All right. Um, what's wonderful about this is that now the Chris and Jack channel is sponsored by Lassie and we get all free drives. <laughs> All right, guys, here we go. Woo! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nothing to it. And they're still intact.
Thank you.